Hey, thanks for making it to Veterans Info Tap. I'm glad you made it. If you are not aware, the VA has, in addition to the proposed changes to tinnitus, the elimination, the proposed change of sleep apnea to be basically reduced down to a zero if you are treatable with a CPAP, uh, and the positive change to mental health, there is one more, and that is GERD. So that is gastroesophageal reflux disease, that bad heartburn. And uh, this schedule of ratings uh, for disability is within the digestive system. And now they have proposed some changes. When is it gonna go into effect? It's a, it's a roll of the dice. In my opinion, it's hard to say. It really depends on if you view it positively or negatively. And it's kind of hard to say. <clears throat> you could put a positive spin on what the rating changes are looking like. However, there's also a negative spin that you could put on it. So it really just depends. Uh, with it being an election year and being that the VA falls under, you know, in the president's cabinet, uh, if, it's an, if they think they're going to get more negative publicity out of it, they'll probably hold off. If they think that they're going to get some positive publicity out of it, then they may push forward with it. Uh, is kind of I, I, and again, this is a guess. Look, if I were the president of the United States, which I'm not, I would be thinking that way, and having that discussion with the Secretary of the Veterans Affairs to make sure that I have things lined up the right way. And so, anyway, let's jump into this proposed change for GERD, and you can decide, and I'd love to see it in the comments, whether it's a good thing, a bad thing, you're indifferent, and what have you. So, with that, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, share with a friend, all that good stuff. I really appreciate it. Uh, you can also support the channel uh, by becoming a member. I do appreciate that. Obviously, it's not a requirement. Those who do, I really do appreciate it. It does support the channel, and it helps me to find you quicker in the comments. Uh, so, jumping into this, um, I also want to let you know that I do have a second channel called Veterans Daily. It's a great channel. I'd love for you to check it out. It's a co-hosted channel, so it's more of a dialogue versus a monologue uh, approach for you. So uh, we'll probably touch on this topic as well over there. Uh, so in any case, let's jump into it. The VA's um, proposed change for the digestive system, and there's multiple changes they're looking to do, uh, kind of cleaning it up a little bit, but the big one is the GERD rating. And I'll give you a little bit of the, the upfront here, um, some of their mumbo jumbo, and then we'll dive into what they're looking at. So, the Department of Veterans Affairs proposes to amend the schedule of uh, for rating disabilities or this rating schedule that addresses digestive system, okay? These changes add medical conditions not currently in, rate, in the rating schedule, revise the rating criteria to reflect medical advances that have occurred since the last revision, clarify existing rating criteria, and update medical terminology. The proposed rule also reflects recommendations from the 2007 report of the National Academy of Sciences Institute of Medicine, a 21st century system for evaluating veterans for disability benefits. In fashioning this proposed rule, VA considered the most up-to-date medical knowledge and clinical practice of gastroenterology <laughs> and hepatology specialties. That was fun. Anyway, so currently, if you are not aware, GERD has essentially three ratings. You got 10, 30, and 60. Now, the difference between the 10 and the 30, and I'm not going to dive into the, the specifics, but the difference between them is whatever the criteria is for the 30, if you meet at least two of those, right, then you're at the 10. So, um, then moving from the 30 to the 60 is a little more substantial. And there's things in that rating schedule, the current GERD rating schedule, which, by the way, is rated under hiatal hernia. So there's not a specific GERD rating. Here's the schedule for it. Here's your determinations. What they say is you have GERD, 
we, the VA, are going to rate you under the criteria for hiatal hernia. Then they look at that, and that's going to include things like <clears throat> difficulty swallowing, um, regurgitation, vomit, uh, heartburn, pain in your shoulder, your chest, your, your sternum, uh, could be material weight loss, could be blood in your uh, vomit or blood in your stool. Uh, so that's the kind of things that they're looking at with regard to your GERD rating, which to me all makes sense. So again, the maximum is 60%. However, when we move down here, and I'm kind of scrolling through the Federal Register here, which is just a gigantic book of information regarding this. So the rating, the, so what they're going to be doing is they're going to add, okay, they're going to add a new diagnostic code specifically for GERD to call out gastroesophageal reflux disease within the rating schedule. However, when you go to it, and this the new the new code is 7206, 7206, and it says gastroesophageal reflux disease. Great, perfect. We now have GERD actually listed in the schedule of ratings. However, it says rate as esophagus stricter. Okay, stricture. So then it says go to diagnostic code 7203. So in some case, this isn't the only one, there's plenty like this, where you will look at a specific condition in the rating schedule and it says to go somewhere else to figure out what the criteria is for the rating. So fine, let's go up then, right, to 7203 so we can figure out what the ratings, uh, what the rating schedule would be. So 7203 esophagus stricture and ooh, it looks good at first blush okay at first blush all of a sudden we see wow you can be rated as high as 80 percent for GERD with the new proposed change the lowest obviously would be the zero percent okay now the difference here let's say a 10% rating, for example, documented history of esophageal stricture that requires daily medications to control, um, it's a medical term, but we'll just say what it really is, difficulty swallowing. So to control difficulty swallowing, um, that's a 10%. So uh, they're talking about medication. So let's say that you have Prilosec, right? So you have pl Prilosec and that's pretty much it, right? And you have some difficulty swallowing when you have your, your, you know, your issues. So, okay, that sucks because 10% is a lot different. Um, and there's no talk to any other signs or symptoms. There's no talk of, you know, regurgitation. There's no talk of heartburn. There's no talk of pain in your chest, your sternum, your uh, shoulders. Uh, there's no weight loss. Um, there's no anything in this specific one. And, and quite frankly, there's not in any of them. You go to the 30% documented history of recurrent or refractory, refractory uh, esophageal stricture causing, uh, I think it's dysphagia, I can't really say it. Uh, it's difficulty swallowing is what it means if you Google search it, which requires dilation no more than two times per year. So that's a 30%. And again, there's no mention of any of the other, we'll call it normal symptoms of GERD, like regurgitation, vomiting, uh, heartburn, all of that stuff. So kind of weird that they don't talk about it. 50%, uh, and I'm going to stumble through probably some of the words, but documented history of recurrent or, or refractory esophageal stricture causing dys dysphagia. Uh, difficulty swallowing, which requires at least one of the following dilation three or more times per year, dilation using steroids at least one time per year, or esophageal stent placement. So to get a 50%, um, they're throwing in, you have to have one of these 
three additional things. One of them, dilation three or more times per year. Okay, that's probably going to be the most easiest one. Dilation using steroids. Okay, at least one time per year. And then the stent placement as another option. You get to the 80%, uh, which again, sounds great, but uh, remember that we're not seeing any of the traditional signs and symptoms. Uh, 80% documented history of recurrent or refractory esophageal stricture causing dysphagia, however, however you say it, difficulty swallowing, with at least one of the symptoms, with at least one of the symptoms present, and then it has a list of three. Aspiration, undernutrition and or substantial weight loss as defined by 4.1212 and treatment with either surgical correction or um, the PEG tube, PEG tube. So that's the 80%. So you're in a pretty bad spot, right? Um, for the 80%. Now granted, you're in a pretty bad spot with the 60% on the current rating. However, however, the current rating schedule for GERD is a more traditional, in my opinion, way of um, looking at the symptoms of GERD. Bad heartburn, right? Regurgitation, vomiting, uh, those types of things. So, you know, to me, yeah, if you have not filed for GERD, and let's throw in the little public service announcement here. This could be you. When you served in the military, whatever branch, you may have had Bad heartburn, GERD, right? But you weren't diagnosed because what did you do? You went to the medic and guess what the medic had? They had antacids. So you, you got your antacid from your medic or your corpsman. Uh, you went to the grocery store and you bought your Rolaids or your Tums and you had a bottle of Mylanta or you drank some milk or and you slept on 14 pillows and you sat up at night and whatever, right? So the bottom line is, is you just dealt with it yourself through your time in service and you even dealt with it yourself after you got out because you already know what you got you know you have bad heartburn you didn't know it was called GERD but you had bad heartburn and you knew so you grabbed these Tums and these Rolaids and all that stuff and you dealt with it over the course of time then you saw Larry the cable guy talking about Prilosec and finally you went to the uh, um, doctor and you got prescribed and you got diagnosed and all that good stuff and now you got GERD so now you're taking your medication and you never really think about filing your claim for GERD. Maybe two reasons. You don't make the correlation that it could be service connected or you go, I never documented, so what's the point? I have, I have no proof of my nexus. Well, my take on that is there are some conditions out there that it's normal to self-treat. It's normal to go to the grocery store, over-the-counter medications, and all of that. So if you write a strong enough letter explaining that you would just go to the corpsman or the medic and you would get that and you would go to the grocery store, you'd buy it over the counter and you lived your life until you saw Larry the Cable Guy talking about Prilosec and finally you went down and you got diagnosed. The VA's requirement is that it must be at least likely as not to have manifested during your time in service. You can most likely get your doctor to write you a nexus letter stating that statement, right? Obviously, if you can get your doctor to say, hey, it's more than likely that this is uh, manifested during his time in service or her time in service, obviously that would be the way to go. But if they're like hesitant, you can say, well, fine, that's fine. You could say, at least likely is not a 50 50 a coin flip and i would say you would also want to order your records you may have self-attested to having heartburn on a physical health assessment one of those health assessments where it asks you please tell me you know over the uh in your life have you ever experienced any of these things heartburn migraines, painful swollen joints, and it goes on and on, like, you know, 40 different things, cancers, heart attack, high blood pressure, you know, it just goes on and on. And you're checking yeses and nos. You may have said yes at some point to a heartburn one, which is a symptom, right, of GERD. So all of that to say is that you may 
you may want to file for your GERD now, unless you're in a very, I mean, no matter what, if you, if you have GERD uh, and you have not filed, file for it now just to get it done with. Uh, two is beware that there could be these changes coming and it could put you into a lower realm. So with that, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate you. I hope you have a great one. I have a massive migraine, so I'm glad I made it through this for you. Uh, so please, have a great one. And remember, if we don't take care of each other, something went wrong.